Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one, Slipstream, written by the one fearless falcon. There is a saying among starship captains, keep the human around and keep your crew on their toes during peacetime, and to be a hero in the rest of the time. I admit that I was mostly skeptical about the second part, but the first half rung true. Our ship's human, Adam, had proven invaluable at causing minor inconveniences that have improved our efficiency with each one we fix. But I, Captain Daisler of the Starseeker Exploration Ship, am not here to debate the chaotic potential of humanity. No, today I am here to talk exactly about how much of a hero he has been. It all began two Earth years ago on board my ship, when we received a distress signal. Captain Days, what the hell is going on? Adam rushed through the automatic doors to the command deck of the Starseeker, still wearing a custom-built racing flight pack that he often used for fun. I felt the entire ship change course. Did we swerve to avoid a meteor swarm or something? Um, Adam, I apologize for startling you. No, the ship is fine. Days, an alien that looked very much like an anthropomorphic deer with four eyes, spun around and faced the control panel that he'd been looking at. Time until intercept navigator, Halpy. Twenty minutes, Captain. Ah, enough time to explain then. Tell me, Adam, how much do you know about my species' culture? In which this herd culture, not too much, I'm afraid, is this some cultural thing? The relevant thing here is that we protect our superiors, and my empire's equivalent of a princess has been kidnapped by space pirates. As an Elichthus, I am on a bounty to at least try and attempt to rescue her. With all due respect, Captain, we're in an exploration ship. And the pirates are already at light speed. I know there is not much that we can do other than fly beside them, but I would be forfeiting my honor as an Elichthus, and I didn't do something. You are making that face again. What face? Adam grinned playfully. The rest of the bridge flinched. They knew that face meant trouble. The same face you had when you used our gravity cannon. What did you call it? Yeet that asteroid into the larger one blocking the way from your system's kyfer belt. Interstellar billiards. I told you it would work. And your stupid plan this time? Adam flipped the switch on his flight suit bringing a humming to life. Ever heard of riding someone else's slipstream in a race? No, but I fear that I'm about to. Damn right you are. Navigator Halpy, bring us alongside the pirates when we get there, as close as physically possible. I'm going to do something dumber than a microwave dinner incident. Aye, aye, sir. Haddon, I'm not overriding the airlock command. This is suicide. It's freaking awesome, that's what it is. Adam stood at the ship's airlock, flight suited full power and an omni tool in the ready. I saw this in a movie once. They came from Void 37. It was so cool. Now open the airlock or I'm using the manual override. As your captain, I cannot allow you. Mutiny it is then. Boop. Adam flipped the emergency airlock panel inside the airlock and pressed the big red button to purge the contents of the entire airlock at once. Captain Daisler could only watch from behind the glass as Adam, his two-man escape pod and about 20 million credits of cargo shot out into space. Thanks to the fact that they were traveling at FTL speeds, the cargo shot out was still traveling at a ludicrous speed. The crates of cargo flew out some of the one mile before exiting the FTL slipstream of the Starseeker and fading into the distance as they deaccelerated to below light speed. Adam fired up his flight suit, its four insect-like solar wings extending as he flew out and grabbed the escape pod with both hands. He was just able to keep himself in the slipstream while pushing the pod back towards the ship, before swerving to one side and plunging himself and the pod to the out to the side of Starseeker slipstream and into the pirates. Don't worry, Captain, just alert authorities at our location and let me handle it from here. 
Princess Zyla sat in a makeshift cell glumly. She was being held in the back of the ship, loosely guarded at the moment because nobody would be dumb enough to launch an attack in FTL speeds. So when she heard a loud thud resonate through the cargo chamber, she sat up and took notice. Buenos dias, you freaking Azinos. Here comes Adam. Adam burst through the door that attacked it as the maintenance hatch on the outside, the escape pod having latched onto the door like a parasite after he had pushed it manually to the pirate cruiser. Surprisingly, he found no guards defending the tied-up princess. Um, ha, huh. guess those pirates are short-staffed. Lucky me. Don't worry, man, I'm here to help. He recognized the princess thanks to the finery his species immediately rushed over and tie her. There you go, he began, taking off his helmet. I'm here to save you, and wow, you're pretty. Zyla twitched her ears in the equivalent of a blush. Um, th thank you. I suppose you have a plan to get us out of here. Only about as much of a plan as Leroy Jenkins did. But a plan is a plan. Get in the pod while I work my magic. He watched as the princess hurried over to the escape pod before planting an explosive charge against the ship wall. As soon as he was clear, he put his helmet back on and detonated it, soaring into the hole with the back into the slipstream. A press of the remote and he brought with him the escape pod disconnecting aside from the ship, aside from a single carbon nanotube tether that he had manually connected to it. Flying over to the main engine amid the debris, he planted another charge, this one time for ten minutes, on the primary fuel coupling of the engine. This looks important enough to cripple the ship. Now, to get out of here. Adam flew back over in the slipstream and sliced into the nanotube tether. Just getting into the airlock of the escape pod moments before it fell out of FTL stream and instantly deaccelerated to sublight speeds. Firing its gravity brakes and emitting a distress signal to the star seeker, it was a rough ride, but they were safe. There! We're clear of those pirates and they didn't even know what hit him. You okay, princess? Yes, thankfully. I suppose you'll be wanting a reward for all of this, she grumbled. Getting kidnapped was humiliating enough, but the payout most rescuers demanded when combined with the honors they received oftentimes rivaled the ransom that the kidnappers asked for. Reward? Adam burst out laughing. Are you kidding? That was the coolest thing ever. More than enough for a reward. My name is Adam, and you owe me nothing for this insane adventure. That stunned her. She took a long, outstretched hand and shook it firmly. Princess Zyla, and to be honest, you aren't too bad looking yourself. Adam's heroic actions two years ago led to his hero status amongst our species. He single-handedly rescued Princess Zyla and took down a pirate ship that often takes a battlecruiser, at least to take down. Then he requested nothing beyond his job security, and repairs to his flight pack only speak further of his noble heart. So, it was a great honor that I stand here and this best man, Hero Adam and Princess Zyla. I wish you both the best in your marriage, and could not be prouder to have both of my crew, when your human tradition of honeyed moon has concluded in two months. I expect you both to be back aboard the CR Seeker to continue our exploration of the unknown. But if either of you ever try to FDL skirm off again, I will have to write you up. Adam and his bride didn't hear that last part, as they were too focused on the passionate kiss that they were sharing. End of story number one. Story number two. Humans are weird. We took a vote. Written by Betty Adams. No scrap, human friend Steve muttered as he stopped dead and commenced his stationary swaying at substituted for stillness in humans. This, Commander Tricklick said in the lowest voice that he could manage, is an intervention. Seriously, Sergeant Smithson said with a laugh, Steve here doesn't even drink. How could he be possibly have a habit bad enough to warrant an intervention? I have bad habits, human friend Steve protested. Enough, Commander Tricklick said while waving a wing for silence. Human friend Steve, please enter the focus for the flight circle. 
Human friend Steve seemed to ponder bolting for a moment. The commander's use of the informal name clearly meant that that was not an order. But the human suddenly slumped and stepped forward into the circle of the winged soldiers. Sergeant Smithson glanced around and then strolled out of the room, whistling cheerfully. Traitor! Human friend Steve hissed after him. Human friend Steve! Tricklick said flattering toward. Please catch me. Human friend Steve held out his hands with a sigh and the commander landed on them, letting his full weight fall into the human's palms. He opened his eyes wide and revealed the many teeth that he could grin. What did I do? Human friend Steve asked. Human friend Steve, Tricklick began carefully, we are concerned for your health. My health? Human friend Steve said, glancing around the circle of the winged. Indeed, Tricklick said, bobbing his head up and down. You are not getting enough deep sleep and you are deprived of oxygen. How do you figure that? Human friend Steve asked. We can hear your sleep apnea from the other side of the base, interjected one of the winged as far side of the circle. I don't have sleep apnea, human friend Steve insisted, and I don't snore, I... The light suddenly went out, casting the room in darkness, and a sphere of light formed in front of the human. Please watch and listen, human friend Steve, Tricklick insisted. Human friend Steve sighed and watched as an image of him sleeping in his hammock started to play. Sure enough, the sound of snoring started up. What? Human friend Steve gasped as his recording played. The snoring grew to a crescendo and then broke off as the figure in the recording stopped breathing for a moment and then rolled over and went back to sleep. When the snoring started again. Okay, okay, human friend Steve sputtered. So I snore a little. What's the big... Your snoring vibrates my horns at night, Tricklet said firmly. We took a vote. Ninety-seven percent of the winged can't sleep while listening to your suffocate multiple times a night. If you will not take flaps to remedy this problem for your own sake... Do it because you are keeping the rest of us up at night. Human friend Steve sighed and shook his head. Okay, I'll get those dang nose straps, he muttered. End of story number two. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.